Fiesta! Perfecto Mundo. It is an official release. It is on the street, uh, which is quite ironic. The surprise package was never intended to be such. It simply started with a phone call, which included an invitation to consider appearing at the Havana Jazz Festival. And uh, I said, how did my name get on a jazz roster? I said, I can play a little blues and a little rock. However, not wanting to pass up a trip to Cuba, we took it to heart, went into the studio and started peeling the onion to see if we could actually play music with a Cuban influence. And what's not talked about quite often is how much Cuban music has already been an influence, as far as I can remember. And one thing led to the next, and uh, we came up with uh, what you hear on Perfecto Mundo, 11 tracks of Afro-Cuban influenced sounds. And uh, it's, it's a very different twist. You know, you speak of uh, ZZ Top and it immediately comes to mind one way. This Perfecto Mundo is another way, but we like it. To, to bring this Afro-Cuban influence uh, all the way forward, we had uh, we started off with a rough backbeat, and then, you know, of course, when you speak of Cuba, uh, timbales, Congo, bongo, maracas, claves, you name it. Uh, if it makes noise, it's in there, and what was a surprise to the engineers was the uh, interesting bit of Latin percussion backgrounding that I uh, enjoyed. Just having turned 13, my dad, who was becoming a bit amused with me banging on everything metal around the house, he said, if you're going to continue that banging, he said, let's learn how to do it right. So off to Manhattan we go, and uh, the next thing it's uh, at the feet of the Mambo King, the master Tito Puente. But he uh, handed me some sticks and he said, tell me what you want to do. And uh, I guess I'd had enough uh, practice on the bottom of a metal garbage can. He said, okay, I think we got it. <laughs> but he was a guy that not only was, was gifted, he, he was enjoying getting to do what he got to do. He was so passionate about it. He was very generous in uh, sharing what he knew. And what I found uh, of value and most fascinating was the way to divide up a measure of beats. I didn't know about falling and finding the cracks between the beats, but it's there. The sounds that uh, came together to make up Perfecto Mundo were wide and varied. Um, it started off, as I mentioned, uh, each of the tracks seemed to make sense by getting the beat established first. And uh, actually Mike Flanagan, one of our fearless Hammond B3 players, had come through Houston with a request for me to sing a song for his solo album called The Drifter. And it just so happens the uh, song he had in mind was kind of an odd rarity uh, by Clarence Gatemouth Brown called The Drifter. When he, he said, by the way, he said, uh, when I came into the studio, he said, it sounded like there's some Cuban stuff going on. I said, oh yeah, we, we're, uh, we're kind of, uh, testing the uncharted waters. It's uh, a bit of a challenge, but we're having a good time making these uh, Cuban sounds, which led to a discussion of how much Cuban influenced uh, pop music and even blues. Uh, for, and it was Flanagan who uh, quickly pointed out the great song from Slim Harpo, mid 60s hit called uh, Got Love If You Want It. And if you boil it down, it's basically a cha-cha. 
He said, well, let's give it a hand. I said, well, I got the B3 warmed up in the studio there. And I think that was, that was early, early on. Might have been second, third song that we uh, came to attack. And then uh, I was uh, getting the chops back on Timbali. It, I, I compare it to like riding a bicycle. It's something you don't want to forget. So when you climbed on the bike, it was like climbing on these timbales. It came back rather quickly. Had a good time making loud sounds. Perfecto Mundo is, uh, I guess it's fair to say it's the first real solo release, uh, at least one that's been officiated by hitting the streets and hard product. Uh, along the way, I think we might have uh, up I might have amassed enough material to make five or maybe even six albums. But it sounded so similar to what I do in the ZZ Top bag. We figured, well, it's either going to be a ZZ Top record or uh, maybe we'll get to it at a later time. This one is so different. And uh, it's, it's such a hard turn out of a predictable ZZ Top sound. The... Uh, consideration to allow it to hit the streets as a solo statement, I think is uh, legit. It's way different. <laughs> the assembly of these recordings hearkened an invitation to actually officiate a, a road show. So we have now banded uh, a uh, six man outing called Billy Gibbons and the BFGs. And it's no secret that I was a big fan of Booker T and the MGs. So we kind of borrowed that uh, headline and uh, it's, it's become a actual working ensemble. Uh, Mike Flanagan, as I mentioned, is on Hammond B3. Martin, Gigi Martin, as I call him, is on the second B3. So it's twin B3s. Two drummers, two young gals from Los Angeles are uh, taking the stage, Sozo Diamond and Melanie DiLorenzo. Uh, they're friends uh, on the street, and they both started when they were seven. So they've got a pretty fierce directive. Uh, Alex Guitarza rounds out things. I've handed off the timbali station under his control. And the the opening shows are going to take place in Cuba. Then we return to the shores uh, right after Thanksgiving. We start the USA March. We go back to Cuba middle of December, which will be actually the Havana Jazz Festival. And then uh, we take a couple of week break and then uh, we hit it again a couple of weeks into January. We start in Florida, making our way up to uh, Seattle area. And that ought to be a trip. <laughs> One more time now. One of the key elements that I took from Tito, he gave a very uh, strident directive. He said, play what you want to hear. If you can learn to play what you want to hear, he said, you're on your way. So that... Uh, kind of stands for anything anybody ever does. If you want to pick up an instrument, it could be a guitar, it could be the drums, it could be approaching the keyboard, play what you want to hear and learn to do it and learn to do it right. And that'll do it. Cool. <laughs> Yay! That's cool.